Hello, everybody. So let me see who I will have joining me on my first broadcast since I have returned home yesterday. I am a little jet lagged. Uh, I was up since four in the morning. So who do I have on this periscope? Talk to me. Thank you, Jasmine. I just feel like so refreshed, y'all. I probably took like three showers. I washed my braids. Hey, Jen. It's just nothing like taking a shower in your own bathroom, y'all, and sleeping in your own bed. So, excuse the dogs. I am on my porch, and so there's a neighboring dog that is making a ton of noise and trying to interrupt my periscope so but i'm gonna do this anyway because i wanted to get this off my chest early so that i won't be asked these questions or you know and just any of you all who have been on the field or you've traveled on the field to know that this is just something and maybe you guys can relate to these things so hey sister friend thank you so much I do I feel refreshed with uh, my husband really really just made sure uh, to take good care of me since I've been back yesterday evening and now we're about to go out and have a date day which is much much needed so I'm really really happy hey Trisha so let me get into this five things not to say to a missionary when they return from the field number one how was your vacation okay this one irks me so much so let me explain when you are on the field it is not hardly a vacation it is not luxury you are on the field working now this is why people may think it's a vacation all right so let me just compare this to when you're working a regular job when you're working a regular job <clears throat> you usually don't take pictures of you actually doing the work you don't take pictures of it so like let's say you're at your office today you may be joining me from your office and from your desk uh you may be typing up a report you may be about to go into a meeting you're not sitting there snapping pictures of you actually doing the work the times that you do post pictures are the fun times with your friends maybe on the weekends you may be at a particular event you may be visiting somewhere and that's when you'll snap the pictures now, as it relates to missionary work, there's so many sensitive situations and things that happen that never get posted with a picture. There's times where I've been out and we've been led to pray for people or you're laying hands on people. And that's a sensitive moment to just bust out and take a selfie. When I'm in the red light district inside of a bar, that's too sensitive of a time to sit there and take a picture of it. So you don't see that type of work going on. And so the pictures that you do see a lot of times are during the down times of the mission field when you get to go visit and see certain sites and you're out living missionally. And so I've been able to see a lot of beautiful places on the mission field. And sometimes people could look at, on, look at that and they're thinking, oh, I want to get on the mission field because she's seeing the world. Yes, you're seeing the world and you're going to some pretty dope places. But understand that that is during the, what you're seeing, like on Instagram, that's during more of the downtime. You're not seeing the actual ministry moment in action. <clears throat> and you won't see it. Because for people who are truly in the midst and you're doing the work and you're in the ministry moment when you're holding that child when you're doing certain things and you're actually in that ministry moment it's very rare that you're going to get a picture of it unless you have a photographer that's snapping those photos so don't say to a missionary how was your vacation trust me a bucket bath is not a vacation <laughs> okay getting bit up by mosquitoes is not a vacation having to get lice treatments in your hair is not a vacation at all all right so don't say that number two how was it it's the other thing okay now you can ask a particular person a missionary how was it but just be prepared to listen to them 
most people I've realized they'll ask me well how was it and they have a five second attention span if you're gonna ask a person who just came back from the field how was it be prepared to truly mean that and be prepared to truly listen to them allow them to process with you don't ask how was it and then you're constantly checking your phone and you're not really listening and you can't be engaged with it so don't ask how was it unless you truly want to sit down have a cup of tea with that person and really listen to them as they process it i think that question is just thrown out there so much but really people when they ask how was it most people aren't prepared to really listen and hear everything about it and really allow you to process so when you ask how was it truly allow that person to process with you and to share so if you ask me how was it be prepared to give me at least 20 minutes i will possibly i may cry <laughs> but give me that time to process and share it but if you're not ready to if you really don't want to hear it don't ask me how was it because then you're like crap all right you know and it, it's just it sucks another thing oh yeah this is a big one <clears throat> how many people did you save my goodness that question irks me the most how many people did you save all right so there's some different doctrinal and theological things here that I can go into but remember that you don't save people okay if you get them to say a prayer doesn't mean that you saved them you don't save people it's the Holy Spirit who draws them to Christ and it's Christ who saves people so when you ask me how many people did I save understand this when you're sharing the gospel I'm not going around taking count um, and taking numbers you know maybe you know if we were going on a mission where you're feeding maybe how many people did you get to feed but how many people did you save you really don't know that uh, you because first of all we don't we're not the person who saves people we are it's our responsibility as believers to simply share the truth you simply share the gospel but you don't save people and so that was a mindset that I really had to grow up from because you know I remember thinking okay because I got a person to say a prayer yeah I got them saved you didn't get them saved if their heart changed it was the Holy Spirit that drew them to Christ and it's Christ who saves people not you so sorry to brush your bubble on that but how many people did you get saved it's not a good question to ask someone we're not out there on the field with our pads taking count so that we can feel oh so good about ourselves and so righteous like man I done saved all of these people no you didn't okay God used you as a vessel and he saved them it was by his power and was by his spirit okay another thing I believe this is my number four why do you have to go overseas when there are so many people here that need help oh my goodness I can't tell you how many times I have heard that in such a slick way from different people why do you have to go overseas look Ephesians 5 talks about the body of Christ being many parts and so understand this there's some people who are called to international missions okay so if you are called to your neighborhood prison or if you are called to your neighborhood hospital or school or whatever own that and be in, and, and do it and walk in it okay that is your part in the body all right but don't look at somebody sideways because God has led them to share the gospel in places where it's not preached overseas. The great thing about America is that we have so much access to the word of God and so much access to the gospel. But there are people in other countries that have never heard about Jesus. And so that's why there are some people that are called overseas. And so you can't compare your assignment in the body to their assignment all right 
So there's many different parts of a body. We are all need. You can't have the hand without the arm. You can't have the arm without the shoulder. Okay. You can't have the foot without the leg. All right. We all need each other. But we have to make sure that we are focused and that we're glorifying God as it relates to our calling. And so, yes, there's work that needs to be done here. There's people, your call may be to simply uh, focus on the social justices of America and focus on uh, empowering, you know, our community. You know, and that may be what God has called you to do. There's other people who... Your, may, you, your calling may be to focus on the hospitals or focus on prison ministry or focus on kids here in the school or focus on whatever, women, empowerment. That could be your calling and that's great, you know, but if someone is called overseas, don't look at them sideways because that is what God has called them to do. God needs you to be in position where he's called you to be. So whether that is Africa, whether that is Antarctica, or whether that is Southeast DC, you need to be in position. And it is okay, don't look at your calling and begin to compare it to someone else's or covet someone else's role in the body of Christ. You have to make sure that you are flowing in your gifting where God has called you to serve. All right, so that's that. Ephesians 5 for my reference. So my last and final thing that i get asked so you do this without getting paid huh <sighs> no yeah i do you know you don't get paid to do missions work and i do it gladly i'm not looking for a salary but i will say this if that is your concern i encourage you to support missionaries. There's so many people out on the field who don't have support. I spoke with a young woman from Jaipur, India. She's working in Jaipur. She's skipping meals in order to be on the mission field. That should not be happening. We in the body of Christ need to support missionaries. I'm blessed because I have a business and various streams of income that allow me to be able to be on the field and I don't fundraise for support as often as I used to but I still need support you know when I go over to different places and so this is not something that anyone pays a salary for a missionary to do we find creative ways I had a yard sale recently uh, to raise we sold so much stuff right out of our house to raise money for the India and Nepal mission trip so missionaries often find creative ways to get funding and get support and they're not getting paid to do this they don't get a salary so I just wanted to encourage you guys those are five things I hope I taught you something but this is just some things that you just don't say to people that are on the field and so thank you so much I'll be blogging and sharing some more about the mission but I so so appreciate you all thank you for joining